I'm just getting messages in. That's okay. We're uh, Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. We're live at the moment, as far as I can understand. Welcome, everyone. Good evening to you all as you all start filtering through episode one of the, the Trade Talk Show here on Blue Broad. I'm Terry. You know Dan very well. Very, very excited to be coming to you tonight. Maybe we'll just start off with Dan and just get it out of the way. What's going on, mate? Oh, fucking Puffy's coming! <laughs> Get around it. Who cares about who we trade now? Papley wants to come to Carlton. He's made the decision. Oh, and a good one at that. Talk to me about where you were when you saw the news. What was going What was going on around you? Where, what was your situation? I was actually dr- I was, I was on my way in the car on, on the way to my gym appointment. Yep. And my mate texted me, oh, are you by the radio? And I went, nah, bro, I'm in the car. And he was like, oh, Papley's nominated for Carlton. And I went, bullshit. And I thought it was going to be one of them stupid AFL Twitter, you know, oh, my mate told me. And then it was actually on the AFL.com website. And I nearly crashed the car. Yep. I literally just was like, get out! Going mental down the road. Yeah, I had Emilio message me, and he never gets into rumours or anything like that. (laughs) Um, And I knew when he was messaging me, it had to be true. Um, so yeah, it was about, what was it? 9am, whatever it was, but, um, mate. Oh, just fucking imagine it, man. Papley in that forward line, forget about it. Well, let's, uh, let's get a bit of a reaction, uh, as you all start filtering through. Uh, good evening to everyone here. Um, I'm sure you're all as excited as what we are. Um, I want to get to as many of you as we can today. Basically, what we're going to be doing on this show, we're going to be putting it up um, as much as possible every day. We want to go through whatever rumors and, and, and bits of news that come through every day so we can all dissect it because trade radio is an amazing thing, I must say. Um, but to have you know a, a Carlton dedicated show where we can chat about it and dissect, that's important. So let us know. Let's, um, let's maybe kick it off with, with grand final action just before we before we kick it off. But, uh, Dan, tell me a bit about your grand final experience. What do you think of the game? How did you enjoy it? Oh, it was probably one of the worst spectacles of grand final I've ever seen. It kind of was over before it begun. Um, looked like it was set up for a ripper, though. With the first quarter, no side could really get on top of each other. It kind of looked like it was going to be one of them wire-to-wire jobs. But, unfortunately, Richmond are just too good. And if GWS play like that Richmond are going to walk it so not much of a spectacle it was great to see Marion Pickett though and Dustin Martin they were they were something else weren't they like Dustin Martin he he knows how to put on a show when it counts he's a big time player proven big time player and yeah I I couldn't help but just feel like what's it going to be like when it's us like I can't imagine what my heart's going to be like when it's us that stress in that first quarter it was a pretty close game um, it, it was unbelievable how much I was thinking about what would happen to me if it was Carlton and it was a close game in the first quarter. Do you get that? Yeah, I find it hard to... like. It's a very Australian thing, let's watch the grand final, because English people, Scottish people, we don't watch cup finals if our team's not involved. It's kind of like it hurts too much. and it, it, There is an element of that where I watch it and think, imagine when it's us. Like, I want to feel the excitement. Like, I saw Rob Winston. He was just peppering my news feed with videos. Like, I want to be that guy. I want to be up and about on grand final day. Absolutely. You know, sleepless night, nerves, excited. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, that's that. Let's let's get right into it. Uh, if you're watching, let us know what you thought about the Tom Papley news. So, there's really, there's really three bits of news that happened today that that's relevant. The first is that Tom Papley is officially nominated Carlton as his team of choice, which what it does is really, um, it probably just starts the process and eliminates a few things that we needed to have in our um, in our corner. So obviously the decision to come back to Victoria, it's validated. I think um, the decision to not go to North Melbourne is also then confirmed. We know he wants to come to Carlton. We know that he's you know potentially turning down a, a four-year deal at the Swans to come and play for a, for a club like ours, which sort of tells you, I mean, yeah, he's probably going to be paid really well, but he's, um, you know, he, he's coming because he's excited for what we have to offer as a club. So 
Um, from that point of view, Dan, how, how much, like, how important is the nomination in the grand scheme of things? I think we missed the most important one. I had to get a trade right at some point. Yep. So, finally. Um, but no, serious. I think every side has a small forward that's got X factor game break- breaking ability. And the kind of a, 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 a few and far between that you can sign a player of that quality. Mm-hmm. And I'd say he's top three small forwards in the country. So he's elite. Like, he's a great age as well, young, in his mid early 20s. So he's going to be around for a while. He's. And imagine him feeding off the feet of McKay and Kerner. And I think it also opens us up to other clubs now because a big name player who was probably wanted by a lot of teams has come to us. So it kind of starts to turn the heads of other players. If you're, say, a Brad Crouch or, say, an Ollie Wines and you're thinking about leaving your club, you're looking at your forward line and you're kicking into some tasty prospects now. McKay, Kerno, McGovern, Cunningham and Papley. Like, you're going to get around that. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. And I think uh, get, I'll get to a few comments here. John Muratidis, good evening to you, mate. He loves the Papley graphic. I'm loving what it looks like as well. Dan, can you see it there? No, I can't, mate. Oh, I can mate, just see no, your I'm, sweet I'm, face. I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, look, Curtis, good evening to you. Best news for us. We pay massive overs for him. And, yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. So, Right now, where he's probably graded, and I'm not really an expert in the the grading of players where they are, but I was listening to Del Santo in, um, and Sam McClure talk, and Del Santo was saying he's sort of there or thereabouts from that pick 12 to pick 15, 16 range right now. So to have a pick 8 or what's going to be a pick 9 now with the priority pick to the Gold Coast, Suns, um, it's, is it as simple as a straight swap? Like, Dan, first of all, do you think that's the deal? Is it a straight swap? And I think it's, watching, I, I think, think pick eight's fair. If you look at, like, say, if you look at the champions' data AFL ratings, where he, he, he's top ten in that, so he's a top ten small forward. And if you look at it logically this year with the numbers, you would have him easily in the top five small forwards in the comp. So for me, I think if you can get, it, I reckon he's probably his real value is about a twelve, a, a pick twelve. But for me. Like, you, you've got to pay a little bit. They desperately need that pick for Danaher. So, to me, pick A, I, I can't see how anyone would say that's over the mark. The guy is a superstar. Like, he's kicked more goals than everyone but three small forwards in the comp. So, Charles Cameron, Sexton and Lloyd are above him, but Sexton and Lloyd have only got a goal above him. Yeah. So, you're talking this guy probably on paper is... Is phenomenal. Like what? He's, he's A grade at his age. A grade. Yeah, yeah. I've got a few highlights of him playing right now. I'm not sure what the quality is really like, um, but nevertheless, we'll keep going. Um, what does it say about him turning down a potential four year deal at the Swans? They're not exactly a basket case of a club. Yeah, well, I think I think a big thing is, and like being a married man myself, and I'm, I know there's a lot of married viewers. I do think your partner has a lot of say in where you want it. And if she's genuinely unhappy in Sydney and wants to go close to her family, it's about the age, you know, where you start having kids. You start thinking about like that in life. So if his missus is saying, I want to come to Victoria, it would be very hard if he can earn more money coming to Victoria. And he's a Victorian boy himself. It makes sense to me, like as a man, and I know I go around about trying to be a big tough man. If my missus said, fuck off to another state. I'm fucking off to another state. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. Like, so to me, he's going to be paid more at Carlton. And let's be honest, without being blue eyed and blue glassed, Carlton are going places. I'd want to play for Carlton Football Club. There seems to be a real great atmosphere, a great feeling about the club. So, and also, Papley gets to have me blow his horn every week, man. (laughs) Sydney don't have that. Sydney don't have a POM. No, they certainly don't. They don't have a dedicated fan channel to blow steam up their ass when they do well. Um, but uh, yeah, so what are we? What are we going to want to expect from him if he does? You know, if we do get the deal done, is it is it going to be goals? And if so, how many goals do you think he can kick for us? Like I'm just I'm just, I'm just running with it, mate. I'm getting so far ahead of myself with this. He's basically here. I, I reckon. 
Mr. Thomas Papley will have 44 goals for Carlton Football Club next year. I like and it. I think what we're looking for, Mr. Tom Papley, I think what we're, it's like to me, it's obviously he always does average over a goal and a half a game a year. So, I mean, that's a lot of goals if you put it in context. That's like over 40. And I think his tackle numbers are decent. So, for me, I just want to see Papley do what Papley does best. Yep. And that's he find, he gets a lot of the ball. He uses it exceptionally well inside 50. He creates chances. He brings excitement back. And that's something we've been starved of for a long time. He brings the feel-good factor. And I can't wait to see the little shaved-headed midget line up in the forward line. I am super stoked. Mate, mate, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I'll get through some of these comments here because a lot of them coming through. Brad Miller says that we still need another big-bodied midfielder to help Crips. How do we get Gaff across? It's a good point. We'll, put, we'll touch on that afterwards. We're going to get right onto that as well. Um, Christopher Broberg, good evening to you, mate. Massive news with Papley is, as you know, got to sort out Martin and Butler and Fast Eddie Betters. What do you guys think of getting all those players? We'll definitely touch on that. Um, yeah, sorry, the, the, the highlights were laggy, so I did scratch them. Uh, the other thing, Angelo Gravina. Actually, Angelo Gravina called this one. He called the Tom Papley one a few months back. So nice one for you, Ange. Uh, Heath Buck, good evening to you, mate. I'm sure you're very excited with this. Papley's not just an elite small forward, but can pinch hit as an excellent clearance player in the middle. That flexibility is gold. Pick nine should get it done. If you look at the highlight that I uh, posted earlier today of him fending off, I can't remember who the defender was and creating space for himself. That That's, oh, mate. That's a strong, clear, exactly right, a clearance player uh, creating space for himself, kicking goals. Um, it's going to be a great acquisition for the club. I mean, 32% as well is inside 50 efficiency. So when he gets the ball inside 50, you're talking one in four, one in, just uh, what, just under one in three yep. results in a shot goal, which when you're seeing he gets 12 possessions a year, you, f- you think about that, do the maths on that. You're getting four scoring shots guaranteed a game from him. That's phenomenal. Yep. Angelo Gavini thinks he'll kick 40 to 50 goals. I like yeah. it. Get around it. I like it. Justin Ryland, the, the Geelong supporter, thinks Jed Buse will bury Papley when Geelong play us. Good evening to you, <laughs> Yeah, good luck with that, mate. <laughs> Ryan Matthew, Dan and Tez, any news on bets then? Well, we, you know what? We might as well uh, get cracking. I might just... Flip up any bets here. So, I don't know what you guys think of a, a small forward uh, duo of Eddie Betts and Tom Papley. Dan, you can't see it, but there's a little Eddie Betts photo just beneath you, mate. So, th- there's two bits of, of, of news to this that I want to cover from today. So, this afternoon, I was listening to Damien Barrett, who was talking about how over the course of the last 72 hours, that discussions between the powers at be at Carlton had come together. Whereas I think early in the season, there were at loggerheads, you know, David Teague's obviously very close with Eddie Betts um, and he's happy for Eddie Betts to come to the club, it seems, whereas Soss and Agresta might be thinking otherwise. So Damien Barrett reported on Trade Radio that there was a coming together and that they were agreeing in agreement to bring Eddie Betts. Now, that was all good and exciting. Um, obviously, having Eddie Betts back at the club is, you know, it's, it's, there are some, some emotional positives to it, especially when you know you're getting Papley already. Um, But this evening, only maybe half an hour ago, 40 minutes ago, uh, Tom Brown reported that that wasn't the case and they were still at loggerhead. So we're at this situation where we've got, yep, they're in agreement and we're going to bring bets. And then you've got this other situation where they're not in agreement. So really, nothing's changed. But uh, I wanted to really spark, not a debate, but a discussion because I think with the supporter base, it's very split. I think there's a logical side to this and a practical side. The whole, he's 33, turning 34, doesn't fit the age profile. Then there's the other side of the, yeah, but he's a Carlton man. Depending on what we would pay for him, he'd be worth having at the club, the mentoring and the leadership and all of that. So if uh, for you watching uh, at home, make the case either for Eddie Betts or not for Eddie Betts. And, and let's bring it up. Dan, I know you, you've you got a really good, you know, strong opinion on this. What do you feel? I'm still where I was six weeks ago on this one like for me I'm feeling better about it because like I said all along for me we have to secure the long-term targets so Jack Martin and Tom Papley we can assume they're coming to Carlton 
they're going to be there in the long haul. They're going to be there when we go through our premiership years. They're going to be there in our next dynasty. They're going to be there for the next six to ten years. Where Betts isn't, and that was my issue at the, at the time. We had Martin, who we know can be class. Is he going to be class all the time? And it was so, you know, as this mentorship. And these are full-grown men. We've got to remember that. They're not boys. They're men. Martin's a man now. So if you need a mentor, don't sign him. If you need someone to hold your hand, you shouldn't be at the football club. So to me, I still stand by that. To me, the fact that he's now the cherry on top, and that's how I described him, he's the cherry on top. Well, we've got the sponge. We've been building that. We've got the ice in. There's Tom Papley. Now we have that sweet glass air cherry in Eddie Bet. So I'm all for it. I said it on the WA Blues radio show the other weekend that, for me, Eddie Betts, grand fi- a prelim final against Essendon, two goals down, five minutes to go. He's got Eddie Betts written all over it, hasn't it? Yeah. I genuinely think Tom Brown gets his mail from Big Footy. Like, genuinely. There's a, there's a lot of guys who fall into that category. There's a few newsbreakers and rumour breakers and lock givers that uh, get their news from Big Footy. But... Um, I, I just think it's why hasn't he been called out on he on his crap like it's unprofessional. Well, Papley's dad did, didn't he? Papley's dad called him out beautifully. Another reason why we want Papley around town. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like it's going to be. I mean, just think about it though. Potentially next year, that's that forward line: Eddie Betts, Papley, McKay, McGovern, Kerno, Cunningham. That's got premiership written all over it. Like I'm going early now, right? West Coast ain't going to win it next year. Richmond ain't going to go back. We're going to win the flag, boys. We're going to do it. Love it, love it. Get to a few comments. Good evening to you, Kevin. Kevin's mail is that Eddie Betts will be the last deal done after a state player, and his choice is Brad Sokol from Subiaco. Oh, get in. Get him to my club. Very good player, and a rookie for Daisy. Business closed. Interesting. Matko, Tom Brown said that North was offering Papley 800000 900000 That North are front runners. His sources are wrong now. Papley has requested a trade to the Blues. Absolutely. Uh, Peter Vlahos, uh, another whack for another drive-by for Tom, for Tom Brown. Debbie O'Connor, Indigenous players need a mentor, different culture. Yeah, it's, it's, look, there is a point there. I don't think we have the Indigenous um, sort of group at the club that we once had, basically when Betts was playing for us previously, because obviously we had um, uh, Jeffy Garlett, Chris Yaron, and the like running around. Uh, you know, we do have Sam Pachetsky Seaton, and uh, I guess Liam Jones. I don't think Liam Jones is one that needs mentoring, though. But uh, that brings me. It's a good segue to the next point, uh, and that's uh, and that's Jack Martin, uh, who's the other one that's been um, you know rumored to be with us. So. Let's talk a little bit about Jack Martin. No news really as of yet. Uh, we know that he nominated us a few weeks ago, and we know that he wants to get done. Actually, wait, maybe we should take a, take a moment. What is the deal for bets? Uh, I know that we have a pick 46 or something like that. So what's, I think it'll be a state knives deal if it's going to get done. In what way? Please elaborate. Oh, I think it'll be a late fourth rounder, fifth rounder. I don't, I don't, they won't get much for it. Yeah. I think if it, if it's a, if it's higher than peak forty, it's madness. Mm. And I think that's I think that was Sauce's sticking point of trying to keep our, our having our assets there. So I mean, for me, forty six. I can see forty six going back to Adelaide. Yep. For bets. Good call. Good call. Um, all right. So the next one is Jack Martin. I've got him up on the screen as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about him. Because we know that it's pre- it seems pretty straightforward in the sense of, okay, let's just give away pick nine for, for Jack Martin. What does, a, what does a forward line or what does a team with Betts, Papley and Jack Martin look like? Are they really all going to be able to play? And I've had a few questions come up here that I want to address. How do we, do we really need to go for all of these guys? So let's talk a little bit about it now. What do you think? Well, I mean, I think people misinterpret where Martin plays. If you look at his GPS, he either pinch hits in and around the ball and on the wing. That's predominantly where he does his work, particularly early season this year in 2016 when he had probably his best year. That's where he was he was around. Or he slots into high half forward. 
So for me, that's he'll just do the same job at Carlton. So whether that means Zach Fisher comes out, Lockie O'Brien comes out, one of them will come out for him. And that's where he plays. And Jack Martin is a phenomenal player. There's no getting away from it. To answer Debbie's question about mentorship, I think we underestimate Liam Jones. Sam petrovsky Seaton talks highly of how Jones is like a father figure. We have the elder Indigenous player at the club. So for me, I, I just don't see Jack Martin as a temperamental beast. I think people think he's temperamental because he wants to leave Gold Coast. But he has been there like nearly seven years and they've done sweet FA. So he's held in longer than May, Tom Lynch. Like he's stuck it out. He's served his time and he wants to come. So for me, my only question mark on Jack Martin is his consistency, where he is very inconsistent and there's no getting away from that. If that's the culture at Gold Coast, maybe that's it. Maybe it's too laid back. But he's got the best chance at Carlton. He's got Russell. He's got great leaders in Crips and Doc. Great leaders in Jones, in the Indigenous. And now Eddie Betts. He's, he, for me, he's a superstar. He could be a superstar. Yeah. No, it's a good point. Uh, and I think the other thing I want to talk a little bit about, and I, you get a lot of comments about this, if you have these three on the list next year, all of a sudden, we start looking at a uh, you know a group of thirty players who can probably play on any given day. So I would personally say I would think Tom Papley and Jack Martin definitely start round one if we are to get them. Um, I'm not completely convinced that Eddie Betts starts round one just yet. Um, but who comes out of the side? Who are some of the people that could be coming out of the side if these guys are in? I mean, it's a tough one because you'd say that half forward flank, they play Colonel and McGovern in the key position and then one on the flank. So you'd say there might be a spot open there for Martin to slot into the other half forward flank. And then you'd say in your, your full forward line, you'd say McKay set full forward. And then you'd probably say Cunningham and uh, Mr. Papley in there. But then also there's the argument that Papley would probably go to the half-forward flank as well. So you'd say them six will make up that forward line. I mean, they're the six best available. Yep. And there's no getting away from it. Um, but, I mean, for me, Betts is going to be used. I'd like to see Betts used sparingly. I think yeah. he's getting to that age where you want to keep him fresh to make impacts. So I think he was overplayed at... at Adelaide, he started to tire towards the end of the year. So for me, I think they're the first six. And then you've also got JSOS, you know, putting that forward pressure on as well. So for me, it's, it makes sense that they'll find a way of playing them. I mean, yep. let's be honest, Zach Fisher didn't set the world alight last year, neither did Paddy Dow. So Zach, Jack Martin, on paper, is better than them two at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. All right, let's, um, let's wrap up those three and let's really just uh, put it out to you guys watching and uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, we'll open the floor now to anyone who has any specific questions that you want to address. There are a few here that I do want to address that I've noticed. Uh, we'll start with Riley, who's asked us about uh, uh, Ryan Bastanak and what we think about him. Dan, what do you think? He's a good, solid player. And I mean, he's one of them players that you kind of need in the list to, you know, he's one of them players that you have on the bench, you know, options. Uh, probably hasn't had the chances at Brisbane like he got at North Melbourne. Yep. But, I mean, he's got excellent running ability and the ability to play inside and out. So, but, I mean, he's, he, his endurance is what sets him apart. So, I mean, he could be one of them players that Carlton are looking for. They're looking for a, a mature age player. He's 28, be 29 next year. So, you think he, he's... He's, he's that kind of player that just adds something to the list. I'd say we are probably one inside midfielder down. Yep. Yeah, and, and that's uh, and that's what's bring. That's actually a good one. That's what's going to bring me to my next question and my next point because I want to raise it. You know, we, we are. I think we're. I personally think, uh, in my view, that we still need a big-bodied midfielder um, or just an, an experienced midfielder at the high level. Uh, I know, obviously. Coggy, it didn't quite happen the way that we uh, would have hoped. Why do we um, have to bring that up every episode? <laughs> Sorry, Matt, I had to do it. I had to do it. But I want to bring up another name because he has been spoken about a little bit and it just seemed like one of those, 
you know, nah, no way type situations. But there is a little bit of talk about it on the Port Adelaide forums, and that's Ollie Wines. And I want to ask the question, does something like this get the job done for Ollie? Well, first of all, is Ollie Wines gettable? Do you think he's gettable? I think if you look at their makeup, they've got the same problem as Melbourne. They've got a lot of inside players. Have they got that outside run? So I think that's where the talk stems from. They could probably afford to chop an inside midfielder to get that. We know Melbourne are going hard for Langdon, you know, to and Bra- and to really expand that midfield. They they don't have a lot of run and carry. So to me, I think he's gettable, and I think if Carlton somehow find a way of getting Wines, Papley, and Martin, I am going to be insatiable from now <laughs> till. The grand final. Wines, Papley and Martin, and we are the Brisbane Lions of 2019. Like, oh, it's... Fuck the Brisbane Lions, we're the Tigers. <laughs> oh, no, it's great. That's, uh, and Wildy's got a question here as well on Braden Sire, who's who's another Absolutely one. Absolutely froth, yeah. Braden Sire. If you look at his numbers and you compare them to Cripps at the early start of his career and you disregard the first year because that was nonsense from Cripps, yep. and you take it from year two... Very similar type of player, exceptional, exceptionally gifted. And you'd say that what I'm hearing at Collingwood is that they're really great Wills and Noble. Yep. So he's kind of been pushed back further still. They expect Beams to return. So I would say that he's probably a chance. And he's definitely worth looking at. Fits the age profile, tough, big, no nonsense. I'd, I'd love to see her. If we can't get Wines or someone like that, see is more than capable. Yep. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. What What is a deal that gets it done for someone like an Ollie Wines? What about something like a Carlton 2020 future first round pick and throw a name out there like a Zach Fisher or something? Does that get well, the job done? That's the rumours. In the I was reading in the port forums. They won. They were saying Carlton's future first and uh, Zach Fisher for the outside run. And yep. I'm kind of a little bit torn with that because I love Zach Fisher, but. We've got Jack Martin and Tom Papley, so Zach who? Yeah, well, that's, yeah. I mean, if if it means you're getting an Ollie Wines, I mean, and that's the reality, and we don't want to, we don't want to, um, you know, talk about, people don't like talking about players leaving uh, because it's obviously, you know, it, it, it's a tough situ- conversation to have. But I certainly think when you have a, a you know, a, such a big group of high draft picks like we have, after a few years, and you look at GWS as the example, they've started to become a little bit of a factory for trading those guys as they start developing and getting some currency for them while they're still young. So when you look at our list, there is quite a few defenders on the list. Um, and, uh, and we do know that we still do want a big-bodied midfielder. We know that Setterfield's on the list, and he's going to develop well. And we think Matt Kennedy's going to do a good job, but we're still another one short. So do you start looking at a Zach Fisher, a Paddy Dow, and the like? It's It's... It's a tough conversation to have, but... Uh, I mean, for me, I mean, I, I do... I have a firm belief that Setfield is going to become that big body. Yep. And he showed a lot last year that he can do it. And you've got to remember he's going to have another year in the system. So you've got to remember his draft profile comparison was Marcus Bontepelli. So if you had Bontepelli in Crips, you're laughing. So for me, like, I'm not a big fan of getting another midfielder. For me, I think small forwards... Uh, priority number one. Yep. And I think we're definitely one genuine small defender light because yep. we've got to remember Cade Simpson's about to retire next year and we have no small defender coming through the ranks. We got rid of him in Angus Schumacher. Yep. So we're either going to risk this year getting a young kid and hoping he's ready or next year we're going to have to go hard for a small defender. Yep. So to me, I mean, I- I'm shocked we haven't gone after Rory Laird. Mate, there's a there's a serious exodus at Adelaide. Everyone wants out. I don't blame them. Yeah, like yeah. that that club's in free fall, and it's so good to see. I mean, yeah, to think eight weeks ago we had their list manager laughing about the trade with Carlton, and it looks like we swapped pick four for Papley and Stocker. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Speaking of Stocker, I think that's the that's the replacement for Simo. Debbie just commented it right now. I agree with you, Debbie. I, I think Stocker is the natural 
replacement for Simo. Now, whether Stocker goes on to be a small defender for the rest of his career, I don't think so. I think I think Stocker will probably eventually become, you know, a, a midfielder or a halfback flank type player. Uh, mate, it could be a Sam Doherty that becomes a small defender. It could be a complete role change. Uh, I mean, we've got to remember with Stocker, he was drafted for an inside midfielder, and McIntosh and Fraser have confirmed the only reason Stocker's playing halfback flank is so he can adjust to the speed of the game. Mm-hmm. So he won't be there long term. Mm-hmm. And if you've ever seen him play in TAC, uh, under 18 level, the guy is elite. He is like he was literally Crips of the under 18s. Yep. So to me, that's where he needs to be, and I want to see him start to be used on the ball because we saw it when he played halfback flank. He's up for the fight at a young age. And um, to me, we also need to remember Ed Kerner, Murphy. These guys are getting old as well. So we also need someone to replace them. And Stocker for me is Kerner's natural replacement. Classy user but he's tough and tenacious. Yep. So I still think we're missing one genuine line break in halfback flank. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. Uh, a few more names that are getting chucked up here. I saw Aidan Bonner's name in some of these comments here. I haven't, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't watched much of Aidan Bonner closely. Uh, have you? Yeah, yeah, the old GWS boy. I mean, he's he's got a good lid on him as well, old Aidan Bonner. Yeah. So, I mean, like he's kind of like... The midfield equivalent of Nick Natanui. He's got that beautiful frizzy hair that you okay. just want to ruffle. Yep. But tough, tough player. Do you know what I mean? Um, he also actually sets the AFL record for a standing leap. So there's an interesting thing. But yeah, big, strong on baller. Quite agile. Um, had the third longest kick at the AFL combined as well. So I mean, the guy. Good player. I mean, he's a, he's definitely against. He falls into the bread and seer category. Yeah. He's, he's going to be cheap and potentially could be a list. I like Aidan Bonner. Great shout. Whoever shouted that, yeah. good shout. There was a few here. I mean, I, I think I just want to go back to the conversation on Ollie. Well, not necessarily Ollie Wines, but getting another big body midfielder. I think the key is we want Cripps to start. You look at Dustin Martin and you just know that Cripps can have maybe not as much of an impact as Dustin Martin has forward of of centre, but you just want to see what it's going to look like when Cripps can go forward and unlock his forward potential because he's got the ground, his his ability to win the ball at the ground, and his ability to be able to win the ball in the air is really what's going to make him become his complete self. So I think that's the key to why the conversation for another big-bodied midfielder is there. Someone who can really just relieve the pressure and don't have to worry about losing the clearance battles. I think that's the key to why oh, the conversation for wines is there. It's what, what I said last year thousands of times. It's great having Crips do all that stuff. But for me, totally wasted on him. Mm-hmm. Like, totally wasted that he's got to do that. Mm-hmm. Like, he's way too good of a player. And you look at the games last year, your Gold Coast game, your Brisbane game. Do you know what I mean? You, you look at the game as well against Adelaide. The guy, when he can free himself up, mm-hmm. he's very damaging with with his ability to just break lines through sheer physicality. Mm -hmm. So if we can have another player, but like to me, priority has to be a small forward. And if we can, but like everyone said, Bonner's out there, Sears out there. Do you know what I mean? Bastinac's out there. There is these players available that we don't have to pay large sums for. I mean, Ollie Wines, I think would cost a future and a player. Mm -hmm. Um, And it depends what Jack Martin's going to cost us. So, I mean, I've heard people tell me that pick 34 and 41 might get the job done yep. for Jack Mine, but to me, that seems unders. Yeah. But if, it, if Sauce pulls it off, yeah, oh. throw the future first rounder at Gaff or Ollie Wines. Fair play to him, mate. Fair play. I mean, if he pulls it off, I'm going to run around Ligon Street naked. <laughs> A few questions here coming through about the replacement for uh, for crew, or sorry, a backup Ruckman. Um, we were pretty... I mean, you were, you and you and Dane especially raised Darcy Cameron as a potential target. I think I saw today that he's going to be going to Collingwood. Um, I think the key for our ruck situation is, it's obviously Tom DeConning. Oh, definitely, yeah. It's so important to really, it's hard to understand who we should be going for because we've got to make a really big decision here. Like, is Tom DeConning going to be ready to play regular footy this time next year? I think... I mean, I, th- I probably think, I, ho- I hope he does. I don't know if he will. Um, but what do you think about the Ruck situation? Obviously, this is an open question too to everyone who's uh, who's watching. Well, I think Cruz has got the gig 
as it stands. Yep. I think De Koenig suffered last year because he got injured at the wrong time. Yeah. But also, we had so many Ruckman, Lobb and Phillips, and he was kind of second and third pinch hitting in the Ruck, so he never really got to develop that Ruck craft. He did show, though, towards the end of the year that he has excellent Ruck craft. It's building, takes good marks, kicks for goal, really solid numbers. So for me, I reckon Tom De Koenig's ready to take over 2021-2022. What I'd like us to do is Cruiser goes down regularly and it's getting more frequent at Gowan. So we can't rely on him playing 20-odd games next year. So for me, the only logical option is get Phillips, keep Phillips for another year. Yep. Yeah, um, I agree. Because, I mean, we, we've already lost... Look, we know that Loby's not going to be with us next year. So the conversation sort of centers around, do we go with the three of them, the Phillips, Cruiser, and TDK? Do we go and get a Tom Nichols? I think Riley mentioned here. Uh, yeah. You know, so it's 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 sort of there. I mean, for me, Darcy Cameron would be great, but I mean, there's something going on with young Ruckman in the comp because you had Braden Proust saying, I want to play more football. So he nominates to go to a club with the best Ruckman in the club. He goes to Melbourne for banter. I never and, understood that. And then you've got Darcy Cameron going, oh, I want to play more football. So he pisses off to Collingwood. Like, is it a prerequisite to be a Ruckman and be stupid? Because... <laughs> um, because at the moment, the two Ruckman that have requested trades have taken IQ tests and the results have come back negative. Yeah. Like, what a mad decision. No, Do you know what I mean? I don't understand it. But but fair enough. I mean, for me, Ruck, Tom DeCording is going to be a gun. He's going to be a star. Well, it's a, good, so, it's a good point because Matt's asking, and let's maybe talk about it. Matt's asked here, why is he rated so highly? What does he bring to the table? Who? Tom DeCording. Tom DeCording, oh, you you got to look. He's... 200 plus centimetres, but he moves like 180. He glides across the surface. He's got great agility. He's got great speed for a big man. Good kicking technique. Can take a hanger. The only raw thing at the moment is his ruck work. But that's something that can be learned. He's got the talent. You want to see him jump for centre bounces. He's, he literally just like takes off. It's, it's a joy to behold. So for me, he's got all the facets that make a good Ruckman. Plus, you've met him. You know his head switched on. Yeah, yeah. Very focused kid. He's always nagging the Ruckman for advice. So he's a hungry learner. To me, that kid is just a pure athlete. Yeah. And you look at all the modern-day Ruckman now. They're athletes. The, gone are the days, big guy. Yeah, the big busted Ruckman. Yeah. Like you look at him now. He's the modern-day Ruckman. And he's, he's a serious player. So for me... Good hands, our rook team. Good if, there's hands. One th- if there's one thing I can certainly attest to from personal experience, it's the it's the character of him. You know, he's you know when I met him and spoke to him, I you sort of you just you just know right away. Okay, I know exactly why we drafted you. You know, he's just got that he's got that charisma about him, that presence about him. He comes from a big family. He's been the younger brother. He's understood different personalities. He's empathetic. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's just a matter of getting him on the park. The talent's there, the character's there. He's going to be 21 next year. He's still very young. Um, so like I said, I think this time next year, um, I think this time next year, we hope Tom DeConning is ready to just, uh, start playing regular footy. It'd be he good for the club. He looks like a superstar too, doesn't he? Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, you can see him on the back of like, you know, Cornflake selling him. He's a, he's a good looking unit. Yeah. Matt Rogers is asking if Liam Baker is still coming. No, Liam Baker fell short, Matt. You'll know about that. Um, unfortunately, couldn't quite make it to the to Carlton. He fell a little short, so didn't quite make it there. Andrew's which asking... Is, which is ironic as well. Very ironic. Short. ironic. Very, very ironic. Andrew is asking, is, he, is Tom DeConning a pure ruck or a ruck forward? Well, I mean, he'll go, I think he'll become a pure ruck. At the moment, he's kind of like that hybrid... Which, which most Ruckman do start out. Brody Grundy had a similar start. Learned his forward craft, pinch hit in the Ruck. And look how good he turned out. I think the priority with DeConig is we overlooked Cruiser when he first came. And look, it costs us. His body's still growing. It's a real, real high-impact position. So to me, Kauna doing the right thing, drip-feeding him AFL football. To yep. me, that is the most important thing. Yep, love it. 
Jeff O'Day, good evening to you, Jeff. Ruckman, Cruiser, Tom DeConnie, Casbolt, Phillips, in that order. So I don't think they will recruit any more rucks. TDK will be the best goal-kicking forward the Blues have ever had. Huge call. I like it. I like it a lot. Great. I mean, I think what I'd like to know from the audience, I've seen a few on AFL Trade Radio, radio that were talking about Levi, and they were all saying that their sources, Mitch Cleary was saying Carlton won. I've only offered him the natural one-year extension, but he wants longer. And he's really pushing for that two, three-year extension. So to me, like, what do we do with Levi? Like, do, do people, like to me, there's trade value there. And if Carlton obviously have a reason they don't want to give him a two-year deal, they don't want to extend the extension. So to me, do we look at maybe there's, there's talk Adelaide are going in for Lacocious as part of one of their players? Right. Do we maybe tout Levi's name to Gold Coast? Because he'd be perfect for Gold Coast, centre-half forward. Yeah. Yeah, I, I usually find the discussions with Levi, it's very split through the middle. You either really want him to stay or you really want to get whatever you can for him uh, while you can, while we've got that window. I mean, personally, I, I, I hate to say this, and I know Dane will shoot me for this, but I'd love Levi to stay. I think, for me, he kind of deserves to be a one-club player. He's been brilliant for us. Yeah. And he's really, really worked hard. I mean, who would have thought he'd do well down back? So, I mean, to me, he's a great option, but I'm just thinking long-term, there's quite a lot of tall defenders we've got now. We've got Doc back. So you've got that small fold. One of them back pocket positions will be taken by Doc. Is it time maybe to tout him out? It's a good question. It's a good question. A few more here before we wrap it up, mate. Cost is asking, where do you see players like Fisher and Gibbons fit in if Betts, Papley and Martin all come in? Yeah, well, I mean, Gibbons, I think you want to see him in the midfield, right? If you get that forward presence, you probably want to see Gibbons play in his natural position. I mean, at the moment, yeah, when people talk about small forwards at Carlton, we've got one in Cunningham, and then we've got a load of midfielders that happen to play small forward. So it, I always say, if you had an electrical forward at home, who are you going to get, a handyman or electrician? You get an electrician. So at the moment, we're going to have the luxury next year of playing actual small forwards there. Yep. So to answer the question, I think Gibbons is going to start pinch hitting in the midfield go on the wing. He looked really devastating towards the back end of the year. 100%. And Zach Fisher, I think he creates pressure. That's what we're forgetting. A lot of these players, we've got midfielders who are playing in the forward line. We've now got depth midfield and small forward all of a sudden. We've got pressure on places. A bit of pressure does wonderful things to players. Look at Brisbane, how well their Neeful team played and how well they the Brisbane team played because they're all on the top of the game fighting to get each of us jobs. It's going to be a great time at Carlin. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Thoughts on Lockie O'Brien. If you had picked 10 again from last year, would you take him again? This is from Alex Fiola. Oh, come on, Alex. Don't, don't say that. Um, probably not, knowing what I know now. But then again, I think he's shown last year he's getting better. I think he's probably just lacking the ability to find the ball. So to me, I'm more than happy with Lockie O'Brien. Like, I think he will become a player for Carlton. I've got no doubt. We know I love Lockie O'Brien. He's one of the players I have proudly on my Guernsey. So next year we'll have Chozza, Lockie O'Brien and Papley. Definitely will be on the old back. So, yeah, I think he'll be a good player for us. And I think probably a good pickup. I think that's a wait and see with yep. Lockie. Absolutely. What about uh, anyone from the Northern Blues stepping up next year? Someone like a Ben Silvani. I... No, he... He made some inroads late in the year, um, but I, I didn't watch enough of them to really know anything about how far along he is, how close he is to playing uh, in the ones. I don't. The thing with Ben Silvani is there's just no rush, is there? Well, you'd say Jones and Wheatering have got that locked down for the minimum the next three years. So, like, I, I reckon you'll see Bezos play at AFL football though next year. Yep. I, I reckon if I put my Mystic Meg hat on. I reckon he'll play against Essendon. I like it. I like it a lot. It's a good thing. Oh, Silvani's debut against Essendon. They certainly do. All right, guys, that's it. It's been a great show. Thanks for joining us. We will be back throughout the week. Stay tuned. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for any news. Let us know what you think about the format. Let us know what you think about Tom Papley. Uh, it's very exciting times. 
And uh, we'll see you throughout the week. Go Blues. Thanks, Dan. Go Blues.